In today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down how I animated the Rally Cats logo. It started out as just a for fun thing. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll see the Coffee Break animations, which is just something I do every once in a while where I animate random stuff, mainly logos. And uh, well, I posted it, they saw it, and now they use it at the beginning of the podcast, which is uh, pretty surreal because I watched that and I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan, so it's it's weird seeing that now, but it's it's pretty awesome and just kind of goes to show how cool the internet is. Anyways, let's hop into Illustrator where this tutorial starts. If you're watching along, I'd recommend getting a coffee, you know, just a little sip sip juice juice. I started out with the logo over here. This is just an Instagram post that they posted. And then what I did was I traced it manually by hand using the pen tool in Illustrator. So just hit P, you bring up the pen tool and then you just start clicking away. And the way I did it for a lot of it was just kind of placing points. So let's say that's it right there. And then if you click P again to get out of that and then you hold Alt in my case or Option, then you can drag and kind of match the path. It ended up being a very tedious process and it took a lot of coffees to get through it, but it was a fun time, good practice. And you know, it's, it's always good just getting comfortable with different techniques. When I went into this, I knew that I wanted it to be like a ride on script effect to make it easy on myself in After Effects, probably like a gazillion times easier. I would have to separate each character and each part of the letters into how I wanted it to be written. So basically just using my finger, I'll kind of trace how I would write it out kind of in cursive. So it helps if you know cursive or kind of gauge how you'd write it out. Based on that, I created some shapes that would fit well. So I had the logo traced over here. As you can see, this is just what the logo is as a whole thing. And then I went in with the pen tool and tried to trace in kind of the shapes that I wanted and shapes that flow together well. So you see how this green one is one stroke that I used. If you write in cursive, you'll go follow along, stop here, go back up in a circle and then back down. So we have green for one motion, then orange is the next and then red to continue into that and so forth. It's just about kind of matching the pace and the movement of how a pen would move, which was probably the hardest part about this because once you have this laid out, you're pretty much good to go and off the fix. It's just about figuring out the flow of everything. And one tip that I found was super helpful was making everything different colors. Because if I made everything white, I mean, it would be, I wouldn't even know where to start. So by having everything in different colors, I know that one color is one stroke. It's just about thinking forward and kind of making it easier on yourself once you get to that part of the process. Now that I've put in the groundwork, I had to get it into After Effects. So you know what I did? I just selected it all and then I used the overall plugin to get it into After Effects. And well, in After Effects we go. I split up the words into two different pre-comps. So one for Rally and one for Caps, just to make it a bit easier. And then I also had the opportunity to animate the whatever else I wanted for each individual word if I wanted to. Now it took a little bit of time because what I did was I color coded each letter just to make it easy on myself so I could see, okay, this goes with that type type beat. I highly recommend using that. It's very easy to just change the color over here. And um, for some of them, I did pre-comp them just to make it a little bit easier. Like for the Y, you see it's two different strokes that I used to create the Y animation. So just to make it easier when a letter cuts or for some pacing reasons, it flows a little bit better after I did the two strokes. It's still not perfect, but once you play back at full speed, you really don't notice it. Each of these um, shapes are just masks. So I use the pen tool again to create the strokes. Like you see this part right here. It's just a stroke that I animated with the trim paths. And then I also animated the easing of the stroke just to give it a more pleasing look as you ride along. So it starts kind of tapered and then gets thicker towards the end and then animates out to cover the full letter. So you can kind of see it a little bit here. It's kind of like a triangle. You can mess with that to get a different look if you want to, but I found that easing it really helps sell the feel of a brush stroke. Forgot to mention that this is just a 4K composition because I wanted it to be high quality. When you deliver assets to someone, you want it to be a high quality. So for client work, I usually do 4K depending on this case. And then I do 24 frames per second because you know, it's easy. It's, it looks nice, it works well with most things. If I hit U, you can see all the keyframes and it's just super basic. It's really just a trim paths and then animating the taper of the stroke as well, just to make it a little bit more pleasing. Same thing over and over again, and just about finding a flow that works well. So if we take this P here, for example, and if I scroll through, you can see I have the red come, and then as soon as it gets to that, I try to ease it into the next so that the pacing flows and we don't get weird gaps in pacing and timing because you want the thing to flow like you are writing it 
in real time. So that's probably the hardest part about actually animating this is getting the pacing right. Once the base animation was locked and loaded, I was ready to add a little bit of sauce because, you know, sauce makes the world go around. For this, I wanted to keep that grainy kind of grungy look of the logo. One way I did that in the animation itself was by adding a time displacement. I used the gradient, the sexy gradient that I also used in the distorted text animation time displacement tutorial that I did. So I just used the same gradient because it has some really nice texture to it that is very subtle. Like if you zoom in here, it has a little bit of that greeny look to it. So I added that and then I just added an adjustment layer where I added the time displacement, left everything at the average basic settings. As soon as you apply it, this is what you get. And then you just want to match the time resolution FPS to your compositions, in my case 24. Anyways, and that is what creates this little grunge here. So if I turn this off, you can see I don't have any of that. So without it, it looks very sick and you get some of that nice grungy edge displacement look which i just fit really well for this animation in particular without it you know you still have a pretty good but it's a little bit too clean for me i added the same i just copy and pasted it into the other composition you want to elevate this a little bit so in the composition where i have both my pre-comps i added two things one was just a simple texture so if uh, i take this transparency thing off you can see it's just I inverted it and changed the levels a little bit to get this really grungy look to again match this look right here because I wanted to keep it true to the feel of the brand and the logo. I did that and then I hit preserve transparency. So this basically does if you place something on top of layers that are transparent, it just keeps that transparency. So it's basically like a mask without parenting it to something specific. Then as you can see, I have a little bit of edge grunge here and I did that just using a displacement map. So I added another texture that uh, looks just a little bit different. For each individual pre-comp, I just added a displacement map and of course a fill because otherwise we still have all the crazy colors. And then I just played around with the settings until I got a look that uh, I really enjoyed. I liked a little bit of the specs you see out here, just a little bit of displacement here and there without messing with it too much. And then I added a null to each of those pre-comps so I could animate the position and rotation ever so slightly. And I think it's also worth noting that I animated the textures. I recommend checking out my friend Sky's YouTube video. He has an amazing tutorial on how to animate textures and that's the technique I use because it works really well. So I checked that out, the link everywhere. Anyways, so I added just a little bit of movement to the logo coming in, nothing too crazy. And we also have an inertial bounce on it just because um, I just wanted it to feel a little bit more organic in the way that it comes in. That is pretty much it for the logo animation itself. And it is finally time for my favorite part, which is the extra, extra sauce. In our main composition, you can see we have a little bit of sauciness going on. Nothing too crazy, you know, it's pretty basic sauce really. First thing is particles. I love particles. I have black and white particles. Black, you can't really see in the background, but if it goes over the text, you can see it. And white, because you can see it on the background, just adds a little bit of that vintage retro film type of vibe, which that podcast very much has, and the logo also embodies the character. Now, until the next part of the source, posterized time, 12 frames, animating on twos, super neat look. It's a cheat code, really. Posterized time, anything just works wonders. I added a transform and added an expression to the position, which is just a wiggle expression. Nothing too crazy. I add some more movement to it. And as you can see, it's just a very basic um, expression. Now, I've covered this before. I did it in the Olio breakdown as well, but it is just a like a grain look type thing that I get by using two instances of noise. One set to a bigger and slower speed and the other one set to a smaller and faster speed. That just gives it a more organic look I found rather than just one instance sent to the basic settings. Now that's pretty much it for the logo animation itself, but to present your animations as I talked about in my sound design video, it's important to create an experience. So I added some sound design to it as well. I'm gonna be nice, I wasn't gonna do it, but I figured I might as well show you my DaVinci Resolve project, which is where I added the sound design. I'm not gonna to go too in depth for a more in depth process of how you go about sound designing animations. I'd check out my sound design video, but I'll um, give you a quick insight. So let me open that up for you. In DaVinci Resolve, we have a pretty neat little timeline, nothing too crazy. We have the logo playing over. I played with a few different instances. We have the one with background, one that is just transparent. Um, if you want to overlay it over video. I have one, there we go, one where I used glow. I like the way the glow looked, but it didn't feel true to the logo. So I felt like it didn't really fit. So I took that off and I just kept it at the basic look, no glow, kind of grungy, distorted. I have a couple of different layers. They all kind of just help to sell the effect of 
the logo i kind of base it off what the logo feels like i have a writing sound just to you know because it looks like while writing i have a little bit of swoosh i have the logo sound itself like the jingle i guess you could call it i have that as well and kind of match that up to the movement so that it ends when the lost stroke finishes so we have the you know this one for example i reduced the semitones the same with the jingle just made it sound a little bit cooler some analog film sounds and yeah it's just about layering as i mentioned in the video yeah that's pretty much all there is to this logo animation and animating logos in general it's just about capturing a vibe and making sure that vibe corresponds with the logo i just want to say thank you and hopefully you learned something useful from this tutorial maybe some tips techniques you know what i'm saying thank you and uh, i'll see you next week so i'm looking forward to that peace